All right, so if you want to be a consistent golfer, there's two things that have to happen. I'm going to get to the second one, which is a secret that most people don't realize is so closely related to this. But number one is I have to be able to hit the golf ball first and then come down and take a divot in front of the golf ball right here like I did on this mat. Now I'll get to later in this video why if you just do this one piece, if you just focus on hitting in front, you're probably gonna hit some pretty bad shots. Uh, but I'll get to that here in a second. Let's first get the divot in front and then let's add the secret piece that's gonna tie it all together. So how do we get the divot in front? It comes down to your weight shift. What happens in a golf swing is my weight shifts to the right in the back swing. And then as I'm in my transition, my weight shifts to the left and then I make my downswing. As I get my weight over my lead foot, I get my hands in front of the club head as I'm at impact, then I can hit the ball first and then come down and hit the ground. And if I can do that every single time, that's really half the battle. If you can do that with a nice straight shot shape or even a little bit of a draw, which we'll get to in the second half, that's the full picture. You're gonna play some pretty daggone good golf if you can do nothing else but those two things. All right, so let's jump into progression here to teach us how to do this. Now here I have this divot board, the little yellow dot in the middle, we're gonna pretend like that's the ball placement and I'm gonna put it in the middle of my stance when we're playing any iron off the ground basically. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and shift my weight to my lead foot. I'm gonna let my right foot drop back until it's about in line with the heel of my left foot, if I'm looking from down the line this way, and it's barely gonna be resting on the ground. It may even be angled in this way and just kind of barely sitting on the ground and my weight should feel like it's centered over the middle of my foot on my left foot. So I don't want to go way up on the toe this way. I don't want to go way back on the heel like this and the foot's rounding out. I just want to feel like I'm centered right through the center of my foot. That's going to make it almost impossible to do anything but make contact in front of this yellow dot. Now, As I make some swings here, you can see that right away my divot ends up being two, three inches in front of the golf ball and it's almost impossible to do anything but that. Now, if you're not getting that divot in front, so if you're using this divot board and the marks end up doing something like this, even when you do this drill, and they end up at the golf ball or even behind the golf ball, that has to do with that right hand kind of pushing and flipping, trying to take over. Now, a lot of times that's in an effort to get more power. So training it to be leading in front sometimes doesn't feel as powerful, but when you see the ball fly, it actually goes a lot farther. So here's the solution to that. Same drill, middle of the stance with the golf ball. We drop a right foot back, weight centered over the left. Now take just the right hand only. And what I want you to focus on is a little bit of shaft lean. I want you to feel like if you have this divot board, you put the club head on the golf ball and you put the right hand all the way up here to where my hand would be over the front of this board. Now it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I like to do that to start. And then from there, I'm simply gonna rotate back, keeping that same angle in my wrist. So I have an angle in the back of my wrist. I keep that angle as I rotate back. As I rotate through, I feel like I keep that angle as I'm going through. Now when you start to swing with more speed, that angle will release after impact, which is totally fine. But you don't need to feel that. That'll happen all on its own as you add some swing speed. So here on the ball, hand in front, and then I feel like I'm rotating my body keeping that angle the entire time. And you'll see right away, that just guarantees that you get that divot in front, probably four or five inches in front, which would be a bit to the extreme, but that's exactly how I want you to practice it. If we get too far in front, we can always move it back very, very easily. Now do a few swings like that, and then once you get comfortable, do it with both hands. Same angle on the right wrist, back and through, and repeat that until you get a good 15 or 20 making sure that you get the divot in front. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the right foot, but with a small tweak. I'm gonna take a golf ball, and as I set up to this, I'm gonna put that golf ball on the outside of my right foot. So it almost, if this is my right foot on the ground, it kinda angles the foot in. I like to put it kinda on the ball of the foot up here, so that it's easy to feel like you're going off that foot. And that's exactly what you should feel like in the swing. So as I set up to this board now, my foot angled in, my weight starts on my right side, but it helps me to push off that right side and get my weight balanced on my left, just like we worked on. And when you put that together with the wrist angle, again, the divot gets way in front. So don't be afraid to over-exaggerate that. I want you to use this board and 
feel like you keep all the divots. If you see these two yellow lines that are on there, keep all of the divots in front of those two yellow lines for now. And as we start to add some speed, you'll see right away that that'll start to move back. Now, here's the deal. This is not gonna work. You're gonna hit terrible shots if that's all you do. And the reason is, is that most players are already a little bit steep in their downswing, meaning that the shaft is too vertical and they're already swinging a little bit too far to the left with your path. Most players don't overdraw the golf ball. If you already overdraw it, you're one of the rare few that overdraws the golf ball every time. You probably don't have to make this adjustment, but I bet if you're watching this, that's probably not you. You probably don't hit a 15 or 20 yard draw every single time. So what ends up happening is if I'm already a little steep, if I'm already swinging a little bit too much to the left, getting my weight more left and feeling like I hit down more gets me even steeper and more over the top, and I end up hitting this big banana slice. So that would look something like this. If I'm already a little bit steep, I'm setting my weight to the left, I'm getting my weight shift and that divot in front like we just worked on, and all of a sudden I slice across it, that ball bleeds off to the right, doesn't go very far, and if you look at this divot board again, it gives you instant feedback. Notice how the angle of the divot is going to the left. If I put my club down, the direction that this is traced, you'll see that my path is going this direction. So what we need to do is get the path more to the right, and that's when you can start to hit some really great shots. So we gotta hit the divot in front, like I did there, but we gotta get the path a little bit more to the right. Now the secret to this is in the hips. Most people try to swing the club head or swing their arms more to the right, but if your hips are in the way, it's never gonna happen. So here's what I mean by that. If I set up to this divot board and all of a sudden my hips are bumped like this or my spine angle is kind of leaning this direction, if I try to swing to the right, so it's almost like a little reverse pivot here, if I get this way, if I try to swing out to the right with my hands and arms, there's no chance because my hips are in the way. I'd have to hit myself in the right hip. Here's the secret to it. You want to feel like your hips are bumped toward the target and almost a little bit closed. So if I put a club on my belt buckle here, I would have my belt or my hips pointing a little bit more toward the right, like almost the right side of the green or the right side of the fairway. You'll notice how that almost presets my head a little back behind the golf ball, and it starts to clear out a bunch of room in here to where I can swing inside out. Now, if you pair that with the drills that we just worked on, it's easy to get the divot in front and get that path inside out. So if I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and bump my hips, close them a little bit. I got a lot of space in here. And again, I'm gonna get my weight to the left, swing out to the right. And now all of a sudden I exaggerated there for the camera, but you can see the path of the, the divot was inside out. It wasn't chopping down over and across. So I'd like for you again, do a handful of reps like that until you get the, the feel of exaggerating it and then you can tone it down. Now, you don't have to have one of these divot board training aids to make this work. If you just pay attention to your divots, mark where your golf ball is. If you're outside on grass, you can make that happen. I love this one because you can sit right in your living room and get better at these things that we're talking about. Now, I'll put a link down below this video in the description or lower on this page. And if you wanna click that link, you get a, a special price on this divot board and it also helps to support the channel. They give us a few bucks for everyone they sell. And Bo Longo, the owner of these divot boards, just a super nice guy, world-class professional person, does a bang-up job. So it helps him, helps us to create more great videos here, and it's gonna help your golf game because it gives you that instant feedback. But again, you don't have to have this. You're just gonna improve faster if you do have one of these. Now, there's still one final piece to this. You see, most players, when they get their weight in front, they get that path out to the right. We're so used to standing up out of our posture and kind of throwing the club casting that we still don't hit that clean strike like we want. The final piece, the third piece to really get this unbelievable compression, unbelievably solid golf shots, like you see with the pros, and just for them all to feel good is having lag. So if I can get that swing from the inside and have a bunch of lag like this, then I can really compress the golf ball, have my hands in front, and it just feels easy. Now, when you stand up, it's almost impossible to get that lag. And that's why I developed a drill called the knuckle dragger 
that's the perfect antidote to this. So I'm going to play a preview of that video here in a second. And if you want to watch the full thing, all you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see that card, just look down below in the description of this video, click the link there, and you'll get instant access to that knuckle dragger. Let's go ahead and get started. Got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now, let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball, so I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden, I cast I flip and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground. 